What's going on guys, it's Tom here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can very easily and quickly set up click tracking or even conversion tracking in GA4 without having to have Google Tag Manager installed. This is great for tracking people clicking on phone call links or on specific CTAs on your website or buttons, but there are limitations to not using Google Tag Manager, which I will come on to. However, Google Tag Manager can be a bit of a nightmare to set up, but if you're not using multiple different platforms that you need to track, or if you're just in a bit of a rush, this can be a great workaround to start very quickly and easily tracking conversions within Google Analytics. So the first thing you're going to want to do is log into your Analytics account. You're then going to come to your admin panel here at the bottom left of the screen. And you'll then want to find events under chart display. So what we're going to do when we come on to events is we're going to create an event by clicking this blue button here. Once we've done that, we'll want to create a new event. And the way to do this is we basically need to specify the parameters that this conversion event takes place. So for example, let's say we want to track a button click or track people clicking on uh, phone calls. So we can, and I've actually got this already set up as a conversion on this account, but let's say for example, we were to call it clicked uh, phone uh, button or clicked phone link. Now we need to set the parameters. So the first thing we need to do is the event name will need to equal click because what we're trying to track here is the clicks. So this is already preset event underscore name equals. So I'm just gonna write click in the value here. Then we want to add another condition to specify what clicks do we want to track, right? So it's really important you remember to do this additional condition. One of the easiest ways of doing that and the most reliable ways in this particular instance would be to track uh, the link URL. So we can say link underscore URL and we can say contains and then we can put on here, for example, if, we're, we, if we want to track people clicking on a phone call link on the website, we can say, okay, any links that contain tell colon, because generally when you're hyperlinking to a phone number, that hyperlink is going to contain tell colon at the start of it to start that, that phone call. Um, if, for example, on the other hand, though, we wanted to track a, uh, let's say we wanted to track a conversion event, it's going to be a similar thing. We just have to change the parameters here to match. So for event name, we're not going to be tracking clicks because we want to maybe find out when people hit a certain thank you page. So let's say they've submitted a contact form. We want to know when people have actually successfully submitted it, put in their details, and they've landed on a thank you page. So in that instance, the event name is obviously going to be event name equals, but we're going to say page view here. And then what we're going to do for the parameter is use the page location. And again, we're going to do contains, and then we'll just put in whatever. So let's say, for example, we have a URL on the website, which is thank hyphen you. So we're going to say page location contains thank hyphen you. And that will then allow us to track the pages that have that URL on it. So we can then track the events where people have signed up and visited that thank you page. Now, the reason here that I'm using contains because I see a lot of accounts where they're using equals. The downside to using the equals operator is that very often if you've sent traffic from maybe an ad campaign, you'll often have UTM parameters that can pull through onto other pages on the website. So if somebody visits a page and it's pulling through the UTM parameters on the end of a link, that means it won't match that, that page. So when, when you're saying it, it equals, Google is looking for an exact match. So if there's any like parameters that have been put on the end, like UTM parameters, to kind of attribute that lead or that conversion back to a particular ad platform is going to completely skew your conversion data. So you're better off using the contains operator as opposed to equals. That's just something to bear in mind there. Now, it is worth saying that there are limitations to this approach. With Google Tag Manager, you're going to have far more different parameters you can track. It's very easy to set up tracking on different HTML elements. So you could track like 
you know, the, the text on a particular button. So if you wanted to test two different CTAs against each other, you've just got much more granularity. Um, but again, this can be a very quick and easy way just to get conversion tracking or click tracking set up out of the gate. So you'll see here in this particular event for this client, we've got some custom events set up here like clicked phone. And then we've just set this by switching this toggle as a conversion event. So we can now track how many people are clicking the, 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 on, the on the phone link. Now it is worth saying just on a final note that if you are looking to track things like phone calls, this isn't really the best way of doing it because you can track through this if somebody's clicked on the link, but you don't necessarily know one, was that a qualified lead? Did the call even connect or did they just click the button accidentally? So if you do want to get more advanced tracking for phone calls in particular, you'll want to tra have some sort of call attribution tracking software implemented onto your website. There are some great platforms out there like CallRail, what converts that will allow you to do this very easily. But again, if you just want to get some basic conversion tracking set up out the gate, this will be a great place to start. So there you have it, guys. Really hope that video has helped. And if you stick around for the next video, I'm going to be walking you through some of the key marketing metrics that you'll want to start tracking in Google Analytics to make sure that you're hitting your marketing goals month on month. I'll see you there.